All right, today we're gonna to talk about RC frame rates and what Betaflight 4.2 is doing to clean up some of this mess. If you go into the Betaflight 4.2 tuning tips, you'll see on this improvements to feed forward. If you click that, that goes down into here and it starts talking about some of the improvements made within the code for feed forward to, to address some of the inconsistencies in RC frame rates that we see from transmitters on the market today. It varies by tr transmitter and manufacturer, and we'll look at some data here in just a second. If you are using a transmitter that uses OpenTX, one of the things you can do is update that. And when you read down here further, you'll see there's a new variable, feed forward interpolation SP. Now this was also in Betaflight 4.1, and any versions earlier to that, it was not. And this is the part that kind of makes me chuckle, this whole 3.5.7 thing, or any older versions to that, and everybody's, oh, they're so amazing. No, they're not. There's problems in them that are addressed in newer firmware releases, hence the ev evolution of Betaflight. As problems are recognized, they're fixed. So older versions always have some sort of deficiency that a newer version addresses. But anyways, I digress, back to this. You'll see this feed forward interpolation SP variable in the CLI. It is in Betaflight 4.1. It's expanded upon in Betaflight 4.2 as well. So in Betaflight 4.1, you'll see there was an on off and an average. In Betaflight 4.2, there's an on off average two, average three, and average four. So if you were using average in Betaflight 4.1, that's now called average two in Betaflight 4.2 because three and four were added, so you just can't have average and then average three and average four. It made sense to call it average two. And it's pretty simple. It's just averaging two samples. Average three is averaging three samples. Averaging four is averaging four samples. That's a lagged moving average filter. So obviously whenever you filter some data, it is delayed a little bit more. So you wanna kinda have the least amount of averaging that you can get away with. And that really depends on what your transmitter is that you're using. If you read in the tuning guide here, you can see that it's recommending average three for crossfire. It's recommending average four for R9. So go ahead and take a read through this. I'll make a link down in the video description. You can read through this whole thing here. And let's move on to talk about the issue so you understand why you're taking some time to read through this and setting your averaging depending on what transmitter you have. So we're gonna start talking about frame rate and frame rate consistency. I wanted to note that that is different from the overall latency from when you move the sticks to it gets through OpenTX out to the, maybe it's an external module bay, transmitted out to the quad, received by the quad, and into the flight controller. That's just transmission signal latency, and that's documented here. Somebody did some tests on that, and you can see this is milliseconds down here, and it looks like the ER sky is doing the best uh, on this test. You have some OpenTX. So, ER Sky is another firmware. It's a kind of a competing open source project to OpenTX. And in general, it does a little bit better with that kind of latency. What we're gonna talk about is just frame rate in general. Whenever you move your sticks, it's not sent in one smooth motion like you move your fingers. It is sent in packets. Well, those packets are sent every so often, every six milliseconds, 12 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. It varies. Each transmitter has a different frame rate that it submits those stair step packets. Now what I've shown on the screen here is the roll and it's the raw packets for an actual flight. And you can see that the packets are inconsistent in frame rate. So here we have a 30 millisecond frame, then it goes to a six millisecond frame, then a 13 millisecond frame, then a 20 millisecond frame. So it's just all over the board on the duration of when the next packet coming in. So Betaflight doesn't really know because there's no consistency of when those packets are coming in. Ultimately, it's important to know that because we have to smooth out those stair steps to go into the PID loop. When you go into the filters tab, this is the smoothing that's occurring right here. There's two different types of smoothing. There's RC smoothing as the filter type for smoothing, and there's the more classic interpolation. Both smooth out the RC signal. Interpolation has been around for years. Filter smoothing has been added as a Betaflight 3.5, I believe that's when it was added. Mostly this smoothing and the cutoffs and how it's all set up is automatic, but 
it needs to, in either case, either an interpolation or in filter, it needs to establish some sort of pattern of what the frame rate is coming in so it can know how aggressively or where the things need to be set up to apply the appropriate amount of filtering so to smooth those stair steps out. But not too much filtering that we're over filtering it and causing the signal to be delayed more than it needs to be. So I did a whole video on the differences between interpolation and filter and I'll put a link to that down below. You can check that out. That was probably a year ago or so. But here we're going to specifically be looking at the filter smoothing type. Filter smoothing type is better than interpolation. So whoever's using interpolation, it's just not as good. It's the same delay signal or more. It doesn't handle inconsistency in packets very well at all and drop frames it doesn't handle well at all either. So it's still in there but I definitely recommend using the filter RC smoothing type versus interpolation. In these three images here you can see we're using the filter smoothing type and then we have the stair step RC signal coming in you can see how it's smoothing it here. This is at a 40 hertz PT1 and you can see it's about three milliseconds of delay from the front of the frame. Uh, as you go to eight or 20 hertz cutoff, eight milliseconds front of the frame, and then all the way down to a 10 hertz, that gives you 14 milliseconds front of the frame. Again, this is mostly set up automatically. Just wanted you to get a mind's eye of what's occurring. You have these step frames coming in, they're getting smoothed out. You can see how this blue line is so much smoother. And just like with anything, there's no free lunch. So if you're smoothing anything out, you're going to be adding delay to do that. So you want to have that good balance where you're not over smoothing it. But again, you're getting it smooth enough. It's not causing all kinds of jitter downstream in the PID loop and the motor commands and things like that. So why is this important? Why is consistency of RC frames matter? Well, one is in a racing environment or whatnot. If you're flying along and it's, you know, as you're moving the sticks, if that's sending a signal and it's updating the position of the quadcopter in that update rate is six milliseconds and then all of a sudden it waits for 20 milliseconds which is almost four times longer well you may notice that i mean you have a 12 it depends how in tune you are to that kind of stuff but it's quite a bit of delay and, and difference it's an inconsistency that you have to deal with so that inconsistency is one thing also it actually has an effect on performance of the quadcopter you can see we have the motor traces down here. So this is motor one, two, three, and four, and how they're going ramping up together and down together. And you can see here, this red line is showing a packets, the frame rate. So the frame rate here is normally six milliseconds, but right here it's jumping all the way up to 20 mil, 27 milliseconds. Well, if you're doing some sort of move or roll, you can see here I'm in a, a tight roll, that it actually causes the quad to, you know, this is just a snap roll here. Basically what the flight controller is receiving is, hey, roll to the right, stop, pause for 20 milliseconds, then quick roll to the right again. That Roll to the right, pause, quick roll to the right again, and then go. But that's not actually what your fingers are doing. It's not like you're going over, stopping, and then going in the rest of the way. You're just smoothly moving over. So that jumping around a frame rate is causing an incorrect signal to the flight controller. And then, you know, if your quad is tuned in well, that's gonna cause all kinds of jerky motions. You can see to the motors down here where they're ramping up, ramping down, ramping back up again to deal with that, again, inconsistency. And it's all really just coming from your transmitter and the inconsistency in the frame rate from the protocol it's using. So one thing you can do is you're interested in seeing your consistency of your transmission and things of that nature, you can go into logging set it up to record your debug mode of RC smoothing rate. Now it's important to note that your RC smoothing has to be set for filter for that debug mode to work. So if you're staying on filter, which everybody should be, then go ahead and select that debug mode. You can either record a log, or if logging is not your cup of tea, you can go down into here into your OSD and check on the debug modes, and then you can drag that to the top of your screen, and then you should be able to see debug mode zero, one, two, and three, you're gonna be interested in debug mode zero here. That's gonna show you your frame rate consistency. The only issue with this approach though is if you have quick jumps in your OSD, I think it only refreshes every 60 hertz. So you might not see it for quick jumps, um, but if it's, you know, jumps up and changes to another consistent frame rate like um, 
Crossfire will jump from 6 millisecond frame rates up to 20 millisecond frame rates within a pretty relatively short distance. Within a track, it will jump up and hold. You would see that change where it would go from 6 up to 20 milliseconds, and then it would hold there for a while. But if it just blipped up and blipped back down, you might not see that in the OSD, whereas logging, you definitely would. So taking a look at some pretty common protocols out there, we have the DJI in fast SBUS mode. We have the Tango 2 with its crossfire. We have the Fly Sky, and we have the R9, which is FR Sky. And you can see here the different frame rates. So this is 10,000 is 10 milliseconds, 5,000 is 5 milliseconds, 20,000 is 20 milliseconds. And you can see the difference between these. Crossfire uh, generally is holding a pretty consistent frame rate, but you do see a couple jumps here uh, in the beginning, and these are all within relatively close distance. And still here within a close distance, it jumps up to 20 milliseconds and holds there for a while. That's what that locking is in the latest firmware where Crossfire, where you can lock it to 150 hertz mode, which is down here at the six millisecond frame rate. So if you're a racer, that'd be something you definitely wanna take a look at, or if you're just flying around general, put that OSD element up and check it out. You should be able to see when it's jumping up here. So you have some inconsistencies. The Tango 2 Crossfire is one of the best, but it's not perfect, but it's definitely a forerunner out there. You can see oddly too that uh, Fly Sky, although at 20 milliseconds up here, it's consistent. There's not any jumping around. I couldn't find my logs on Spectrum, but Spectrum was kind of the same thing, where it's not the most, you know, the lowest frame rates down the mix six milliseconds and all that, but it, you know, is at 11 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds, it holds pretty tight and you don't have it jumping around a lot. FR Sky and R9 is definitely one of the worst. And I'm an R9 flyer and have my FR Sky radio. I didn't know this going in. And honestly, I'm the one that started making this a thing. I put this all on FR Sky's radar over a year ago. And it's still this way. Even in Access, it's this way. Even on the, the new OpenTX, it's still this way. So it just kind of is what it is. And that's where the average four is in there. You can see that when you're dealing with FR Sky and for my test, and I have logs with other receivers as well, you get this heartbeat where it's a, a nice competitive six milliseconds just down there with crossfire, but every 200 milliseconds, it jumps up to 20 and then it goes back down and jumps up again. It just keeps doing that. Uh, I don't know why, obviously others don't, so it's not necessary. I don't care if it's a telemetry thing or not. They should fix it. With that, I digress. Uh, the last is DJI. DJI has a faster frame rate than anything I've seen. They're down at three to four milliseconds, but you can see it jumps around a lot. Um, it, so it's anywhere between 10 and you know down here to you know three, four millisecond frame rate. So there's you know it's just jumping. There's a lot more jitter in the signal, I guess you would say, um, but it doesn't have any ones that are really jumping up above 10 milliseconds. That is even at long range. So even when I flew 2.6 miles out with my DJI system, it never went above 10 millisecond frames. It just always has this broad band of it though between 10 and like I said, three milliseconds. So that is it. Definitely check out the tuning guide and special thanks to Chris Thompson, CTZ Snooze for all his work on this. Again, check out that debug mode. You don't have to need, to, you do not need to log for that. You just set the debug mode, hit save, and then you can go turn it on your OSD. That always works like that for any of those debug modes. So don't feel like you have to have flash or, or whatnot to check those things out. The only thing that, again, is if it's something quick in the data that changes, you might not be able to see it just with the OSD, just because the refresh rate of the OSD elements are not that fast. Honestly, your eyes wouldn't be able to pick it up if they're faster than that anyways. It would just look like a big blur of numbers on the screen. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.